everybody welcome back welcome to another installment of a spooky story spooky stories is a series that i do on my channel around halloween for the last couple of years now what i do is i do my makeup i tell you a spooky tale either about ghosts about superstitions about odd occurrences anything that i think is kind of spooky the last video i did was on bats and we just talked about why are bats so spooky and i thought that was a good segue into spooky stories, but today's video was viewer request. Since it was a viewer's request is mainly why I'm doing this, but this kind of video isn't something that I typically do here. A lot of you guys, I know a lot of you guys know who Bailey Sarian is. I get freaking hate comments all the time about, you're not Bailey. Bitch, I know. <laughs> I don't typically do true crime, but today's video will be a little bit more true crimey. Of course, if true crime is your thing, definitely go check out Bailey's. I don't really like doing true crime personally because I feel like it's really hard to do it in a respectful way. But since today was viewer's choice, I figured I would dabble in it, but only because you guys asked for it. So today we're going to be talking about cruises and more importantly, a Disney cruise. This has now confirmed my fear of ships. You won't catch me in the ocean. Let's just say that. Before we jump into today's video, if you like this kind of content, I will be uploading at least four more of these before Halloween, hopefully, fingers crossed, pray for me, <laughs> before Halloween. If not, they'll go up a little after Halloween, but if you would like to see all the videos, definitely hit the subscribe button down below. And now let's, let's slap some makeup on my face and tell a spooky tale. Much like the content of this video, the eye look is going to be an experiment. I haven't even practiced it. <laughs> I haven't even practiced it, so we'll see how this goes. So as I kind of mentioned in the intro, today's video is on a cruise, more importantly a Disney cruise, as you can see from my Disney shirt, you know, we're on theme today. But I figured before we get into the Disney cruise, I would give y'all some fun little cruise facts. So as I also kind of mentioned in the intro, in case y'all skipped the intro, which don't blame you, there are timestamps, skip all you want. But in case you did, I mentioned I have, you won't catch me on a ship. So that clearly indicates I've never been on a cruise. I don't really have a huge interest in going on a cruise. I don't really care for the ocean. The ocean terrifies me. I respect it from a distance. The cruise fact that I want to start out with, and the cruise facts will get spookier as we go. First cruise fact I want to throw out at you is, this isn't spooky at all. The average age of a person who goes on a cruise is 50. So I mean, I still got some time. I still got a couple decades before, you know, I'm like the prime cruise age. I found this funny only because my mom went on a birthday cruise a couple years ago for her 50th and so for me I read this fact and I was like oh yeah that checks out this this check this checks out y'all the peak of the cruise empire was in 2019 which I was like oh that really sucks for the cruise empire because 2020 as we all know was not a good year for cruises because you know they got shut down. So to go from like your best year to like your worst year in complete succession must feel like a joke <laughs> and not a funny one. Like I said, that was peak year was 2019 and the, the cruise industry took care of over 30 million guests on cruise ships in 2019. That is a heck of a lot of people. Like, too many people for me. No thank you. Hmm. <laughs> Looking at this, I probably should have blocked out my eyebrows, but you know, I've already committed and my eyebrows were already done for the day, so we're here. So for me, the 30 million people is already enough to scare me away from a cruise. The next fact, and it's kind of pertinent to the rest of this video, on average, about 19 people go missing or fall overboard on a cruise ship every single year. 19. On a that's just the average. So, you know, don't be too alarmed. Just the average. Since the year 2000, over 200 people, I've seen 200 and 300. So anywhere between 200 and 300 people, on average, since 2000, the year 2000, have been um, gone missing or have fallen overboard or have been murdered on a cruise ship. And the scariest fact of all, the average person gains an entire pound every day on a cruise ship. Terrifying. Out of curiosity, how many guys who are watching this video, how many of y'all have been on a cruise? Just, just curious. Because this eye look is so finicky to do while talking, I'm gonna finish the eyes. Y'all can kind of see what I'm kind of doing. Let me finish the eyes real quick and then I will actually dive into the actual research. All right, back, serving 
Birth Paradise Realness. If you're confused about what this is, it's my Mickey ears, you guys. It's gonna go, you know. Be following, be following. We all on the same page now. I know, it's a little weird, but it's Halloween, I'm here to be weird. Now that I can probably focus a little bit better, let's jump into the rest of the story. So before I get into the Disney Cruise debacle, there was another case that I feel like I need to talk about first. In October, actually almost exactly to the day that I'm filming this, on October 14th in 2005, a woman by the name of Ashley Barnett and her boyfriend and some friends all decided to take a carnival cruise for I think it was her 25th birthday. In less than a day, in less than 24 hours, Ashley was found dead. According to the boyfriend of the time, Ashley's death was an overdose, that she overdosed on meth, um, methamphetamines, I'm pretty sure, or I'll put what the actual drug was that he claimed she overdosed on up on the screen. The biggest thing with the Ashley case was that her family didn't believe this was an overdose, that, that it wasn't an accident in any way. But unfortunately, because of the way cruise lines work, and the reason why I'm bringing up this case of Ashley, they've even had autopsies done that kind of indicate that Ashley was never really a drug user, at least not a heavy drug user at any point in her life. So it seemed a little silly to them. I mean, we're, if you do listen to true crime, all of us are probably screaming the same thing. The reason I'm bringing this up though is because cruises have this tendency to kind of cover things up. Obviously it would be really bad for business if people were um, being killed on the ships all the time, or if it was a prominent thing happening, it would probably not be great for business. There's also the issue with being on international waters a lot of the times that things can get really murky really quickly. This is kind of what happened in Ashley's case. I'm pretty sure they were ported in Mexico and her family has gone back and forth to Mexico trying to find answers, but to no avail really, because obviously like there's really no investment for them. like. She was technically American. This is, you know, America's problem, but you know, you, you talk to the FBI here and they're like, nope, not our problem. Someone else's problem. So a lot of these things get brushed under the rug really easy. And a lot of these cases, I don't ever think truly get solved in any way. And like I said, Ashley Barnett's case happened in 2005. The case that I'm gonna talk about today took place only a few years later in 2011. It is still currently, if you were like me and you hate hearing this, it is still currently unsolved. We have no idea what really happened. So if this is gonna upset you, stop watching because there is no resolution at the end of this video. Today, we are talking about the curious and confusing disappearance of Rebecca Corian. Corin. I'm butchering her name, I know it. I didn't wanna watch any videos on this because I didn't want anything to like, influence my my take on today. I just read articles. So again, I'm apologizing for mispronouncing her name. I know I am. So I'm just going to refer to her as Rebecca. Her, screen, her, her name is in the title. So please someone phonetically tell me how to pronounce her name down below. But we are talking about her case today and her case took place on a Disney cruise, which is why we Disney in it up a little bit. So on March 22nd, 2011, only like I said, a few years after Ashley had also mysteriously apparently overdosed on a cruise on a Disney cruise that was on its way to, I'm pretty sure, Mexico. Rebecca, who was a young British cruise worker, she worked on the cruise. She was only 24 at the time and had been working on the cruise for a little bit. On the day of her apparent disappearance, she was supposed to show up for work at nine that morning. And from everything that I read, she was a very good worker, like very diligent, never really late, well respected from what I saw and like seen as reliable. So on the morning of her disappearance at 9 a.m. at 9 a.m. she was supposed to be showing up to her her place of work for the day and she of course didn't show up. This of course is alarming because you're on a cruise ship, there's not many places you can go. And like I said, she was seen as really reliable. So it, would, it just caused some alarm bells to be rang in the other people who worked with her. After that, a search amongst the ship kind of started. And of course, to no avail, the only thing that they found was some CC, CCTV footage of her from the night previous. Other than that, 
there was no real footage of anyone taking her, of her falling overboard, of her leaving the ship of any any sort. That it's like she vanished. The timestamp for the CCC TV CCTV footage was 5:45 in the morning, and only a few hours later was she was supposed to report back in for work. You would think, you know, not much time has gone in between those. So the entire ship, from what I understand in my reading. The entire ship was looked at. Now crew typically is at a lower level than obviously guests are. So that entire area was looked looked around. And she had close connections on the ship. She had a number of friends on the ship and she also was dating one of the other fellow employees as well. So she had a girlfriend on the ship that of course was questioned at the time of the disappearance and nothing really came out of that. On the CCC TV footage, you can find it. I've seen it. Um, there's apparently a TikTok video that was floating around that re-uploaded it. I don't have TikTok myself personally because I just don't. Um, but if you do have TikTok, you can probably find out a lot about this case as well because I heard there was like a resurgence of it again. But on that footage that was reposted, you can see that Rebecca looks pretty odd, like obviously irritated. Um, she's making hand motions, um, just irritated sort of body language, like something was wrong. It was pretty either late in the evening for her or early in the morning. I don't know if she hadn't gone to sleep or if she had woken up early. I'm not sure. I don't know if anyone's really sure. But from what we can see, she's not looking very pleased and she is on the phone with somebody while making these hand motions. So pretty safe to assume or safe to think that it was probably an argument. I have all the articles up in front of me. I don't think any of these say who she was on the phone with, which for me, I'm like, could we not look? It might've been her girlfriend is who she was on the phone with, but she had some explanation for it. And so it just never made it any further than that. That could be what it was. But after she obviously didn't show up for work or for her place of work for the day and the ship was then searched. After that, the National Guard and the Mexican police were both alerted to the fact that she had gone missing is what it was, you know, first being said as. Once they were contacted, they searched the areas. I believe they had been in port either the day before or that evening before. So they were alerted and they began to search the areas around where the ship would have been ported. Now, I'm not sure about how it works with cruise employees. Um, I don't know if they're allowed to really leave the ship once they're in port or if they are allowed to leave like just the immediate area. I'm not 100% sure. If you have worked on a cruise, let me know. I didn't look into cruise, how they work too much. So I don't know how big the search was or what they were really thinking as far as like where they were searching, but I'm assuming it was just like the immediate area around where their ship had been ported. I did find that Rebecca's father was pretty upset. Actually, her entire family has been pretty upset about this whole thing, which is again why I was a little hesitant to do this because obviously this is still technically to me an open case. It hasn't been solved. You, you know, we've never found her and really no closure has come to the family. So I did read that her family was pretty upset. It doesn't seem like the Disney cruise really followed protocol at all in any way. Again though, I didn't read, this is all alleged and from what I've read, I don't know how cruises work. I don't know how the procedure goes when someone goes missing, if they're supposed to stop immediately. I would assume you can't really just stop everything. There's paying customers, like tons of customers on the ship. I don't know how it would work. And again, like you're floating in a vessel in the middle of the ocean. Not sure how it works, but according to the family, the, the cruise ship didn't follow protocol in any way. And it was a big fuss amongst the it was a big fuss with everything with her family, which I can't blame them. Who can blame them, you know? Like I said, with cruises, it gets a little muddy when when things like this happen. So there's um, something called under the flags of convenience. <laughs> That's the name of the system in place. And this is how jurisdiction is kind of handled. In this case, it fell to the country of the ship's registration, which would have been the Bahamas in this case. I think Disney did end up following protocol in that way. Three days after Rebecca's disappearance, they contacted the Bahaman, um, the Royal Bahamas forces to look into it. So technically I think Disney did follow, but it was a big 
deal to the family. Obviously, the you know things things didn't happen sooner, and maybe things would have gone differently if things had happened sooner. I mean, three days between someone not being on a ship is a long time. Again, there is a huge body of water involved in this, and you know sea creatures and other people and lots of you know hidden caverns on a ship it's a long uh, that's a long time to me after the bahama forces were informed they did send out a detective but from what i've read the detective only ended up interviewing six out of the 900 and like 900 plus employees and not a single cruise passenger was interviewed so don't know how thorough it was he was also the the detective was also only on the ship for one single day so reading that, I'm like, okay, yeah, the family, the family is on to something here. Something is just definitely not happening. Like things should be happening in order to figure this out. And it just doesn't seem like they were. Like, it's almost like, it's like so many true crime cases that we read. It's like, no one is really concerned. It almost just feels like it's normal that some poor employee has gone missing off of your ship. The last time she was seen, she looks visibly distressed. And then it takes three days to really follow the correct protocol. It's like, it wasn't a concern. You know, we don't want to spoil anything for anyone by having something terrible have happened, but like something terrible did happen. So like, why, where is the fire? <laughs> where is, the intensity that needs to be happening. Of course, if you're a family member, this feels intense because obviously your loved one is missing. The family ends up coming out to the ship and according to an article I read, the family said that they were treated very Disney style. It was all catered and kind of like staged feeling. I mean, the stuff Disney's kind of known for. And I'm not dogging on Disney in any way. I'm just saying this happened on a Disney cruise. So I could see how this felt like a production almost because that's just how the company is ran. They were ended up, the, the family was shown the CCTV footage of Rebecca, and even they've said that she doesn't largely seem hurt in any way. Nothing really abnormal. I mean, people get upset and they flail, their, like they, they, your body language at any given time could look like that. You wouldn't go missing, you know? Like it's, it just all seemed pretty normal. The ship crew that was with them at the time really just thought that a rogue wave had just come up at some point and washed Rebecca off the deck. They even ended up showing them around the ship where areas where there were some areas that were known to everyone that were kind of at risk for rogue waves coming in and being really dangerous to them. So that's really what the captain was was concluding that nothing really happened to Rebecca other than it was an accident. She just, it was a rogue wave. It was, you know, an accident. There's not much we can do. Close the chapter on that, right? The day after the family went to the ship and had their little, you know, tour, they watched the ship sail back off of port again with a case ongoing. There was people on the ship that had literally no idea any of this was happening. I don't think anyone on the ship was ever alerted to anything. So customers just had no idea. No, no clue. Due to what the crew members ended up telling the family, they didn't end up laying flowers onto the deck where they believed that Rebecca was maybe washed off of the cruise. They laid flowers there to just kind of give themselves some sort of closure. But of course, they really didn't have that much closure because like I said, it just didn't really feel like, you know, anyone was too overly concerned. So because they were pretty upset, once they got back home, they did hire a private investigator. So the private investigator that the family ended up hiring was a former specialist from the Scotland Yard. So he knows his ship. Disney was still maintaining that it was a rogue wave that took Rebecca off of the ship and really had no other explanation as to why still to even this day, there has not been a body found of Rebecca. There has been nothing for her parents to bury or any kind of lead in any regard. You would think if they were close to port, maybe her body would have washed ashore. But again, it is the ocean. It is hard for me to know. If it had happened when they were out, maybe it wouldn't have. But my battery died, so I just put in a new one. I can't remember what I just said. They hired the private investigator from Scotland Yard. He looked into it. Disney was still maintaining that it was a rogue wave that would have removed Rebecca from the ship. Um, first inconsistency with that is a body was never found, still has never been found. There has been nothing for this family to bury and mourn in any way. 
But the other cons inconsistency with them saying it was a rogue wave, they're claiming that the wave would have happened and would have taken Rebecca off the ship between 6 and 9 a.m. Now, like we've mentioned, the CCC the CCTV footage of Rebecca was at 5.30 in the morning, and then she failed to report for work at 9 a.m. So that is a very squishy timeline, just throwing that out there. That's not technically the, the, the main inconsistency. The inconsistency with them claiming that it was a wave that happened at that time is the weather pattern from that time period. So between 6 and 9 a.m., the weather on the ship was not reported as um, anything that would have been stormy enough to have waves that large to take someone off the ship. There was literally not a storm in sight. The weather would have been fine, lovely. So unless I am mistaken about how waves work, typically you would need a storm of some port, of, of some kind to make a, a wave happen like that. Maybe that's why Disney was sticking with the rogue wave. Maybe that word is very important in this case, rogue wave. I'm sure inconsistencies happen with the ocean. Randomly waves will come out of nowhere. I'm sure it happens. But the rogue wave would have needed to be 100 feet to have done what they are claiming to have been done. Could it happen? Potentially. But it just doesn't seem likely that no other crew member would have mentioned that. The primary piece of evidence that they had in this case was again that CCTV footage that I've mentioned like a million times now because it's really all they have. So apparently she was talking on the phone like I said and I still don't know why they can't figure out who she was talking to. Apparently it was an internal phone to the cruise line but you would still think there'd be some sort of record of who was dialed in but it also implies it was someone else on the ship. It probably wasn't someone outside of the ship is, is my thinking if it was like a landline phone for the ship. The other thing that was discovered with the CCTV footage though by the private investigator is that it was doctored, y'all. It did happen around the time that I claimed earlier, but the crews claimed that it happened on deck five, which is where they were claiming the rogue wave was. All of this is kind of pertinent to this, right? Well, apparently the footage was doctored and it wasn't actually near deck five at all. It was at deck one, a completely different deck than the deck that they took the family on to tour, a completely different deck from where they said the rogue wave happened, a completely different deck in a completely different area. It's not even close to each other. They're not even close to each other on this ship. The claim of this being where it actually happened for whatever reason has been disregarded repeatedly. The only other notable piece of evidence provided by Disney in this case was a sandal that apparently belonged to Rebecca that was found on deck five. Again, trying to show that apparently a wave came, all it left was her sandal. This reminds me of that scene from Harry Potter. <laughs> and all they found was his finger. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about? That's how I'm feeling. And all they found was her sandal, so it must've been a wave. Do I feel wrong putting these ears on right now at this moment? I, I do a little bit. Oh, you can't even see my ears, hang on. The family claimed that sandal was not Rebecca's. It was the wrong size and a style that she never would have worn. Now, could Rebecca have bought the sandal on the cruise ship because she needed a sandal and her family just didn't know that she owned it and it was probably in a style that she didn't typically like? Potentially. The wrong size though, a little sus. Why would you buy the wrong size? Seems unlikely. The Scotland Yard detective also ended up doing what the other detective didn't do and interviewed other crew members tons of other crew members, and some of them had some suspicious things to say, including one that stated, oh, Disney knows what happened. And that was it. Cryptic. Creepy. Give us a little more, please. Embellish. <laughs> please. She did end up embellishing this crew member and said there are video cameras everywhere. Disney has the tape. They know what happened. That's all that was really said. From what I've read, obviously no other tapes have come forward. There have been, there's been no other footage that shows anything. The other speculative thing that started coming out that if it wasn't a wave that took Rebecca off the ship, then maybe she did something. There are numbers of cases of people who jump off of ships, but she worked for Disney. Disney screens people pretty well and everything that her friends and family have said since her disappearance of how she was before was sunny happy, just happy-go-lucky kind of person. Disney doesn't really hire people that aren't that. Obviously, people get through the cracks. There's ways to fake that, but her family just didn't see it as all of a sudden she would have been completely different and would have jumped off the ship in any way. So if it wasn't, 
if it wasn't a wave, if it wasn't her, like something she had done herself, then like what was it? Like I mentioned at the beginning, Rebecca had a girlfriend and coworker who worked on the ship with her. And apparently the night before the event, there had been, I don't even like want to get into this because I feel like it's all very speculative and not really hmm, something I feel comfortable sharing about someone else's life. But the girlfriend claimed that they, her and Rebecca had engaged in a threesome with one of their other co-workers and it didn't go well. Apparently there had been some miscontent and unhappiness, maybe some jealousy. I'm speculating 100% from Rebecca's point of view and that Rebecca was acting abnormally, that she wasn't happy with how the situation went, that the relationship between the, the, the guy in the threesome and her girlfriend was making her uncomfortable, wasn't cool, it was too fiery, it was too much. Again, this makes me uncomfortable to talk about because it's all, there, there's nothing that substantiates this from what I can see, but this does give the most insight into what potentially could have happened, which I think it was foul play. So while I feel uncomfortable talking about this, I know I didn't go into depth. Um, I'll have all my articles linked down below for you guys, by the way, if you wanna read a little bit more. But the reason I'm bringing that up is because the girlfriend ended up claiming, again, what other people had been speculating was that she jumped overboard, Rebecca jumped overboard because of this threesome going awry and she was just so upset and that's what happened. That, you know, ties into why did she look so upset on that phone and all of that and then all of a sudden she's gone. Like, do we believe that? <laughs> do, do, do we? Do we? Do we believe that? So what do we know? Really nothing. Rebecca still is missing. No one has been found. Nothing else has ever come out. No more, no more CCTV tapes. No other person has ever come out with any more information. But at the end of the day, we all know this was kind of just a botched investigation to begin with. It just, it's horrible that like someone's life is gone and th there's no closure for her family at all. It just again felt like no one really cared that someone was missing and it was just oh, a wave did it. I don't know, it just feels like no one cared and it really bothered me. This is why I don't do true crime stuff you guys because I just don't understand like how this happens, this kind of stuff. It just makes my heart hurt <laughs> that there's no closure on this. It just really upsets me. There's like no way for me to close out this video either because like nothing there's no resolution at all. And that, you guys, is the very sad story of the disappearance from a Disney cruise of Rebecca Corium, Coriums of Rebecca's case. And like I said, no resolution, but you guys asked for me to do this one, so I did this one, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys are liking the series. The next spooky story will be on a spooky ghost story from a lighthouse, potentially. There's not much I'm finding about it currently, I need to film it like in another day or so. So we'll see. But it, the next one will be a ghost story of some kind. I want it from be, to be from a lighthouse that I heard about, but we'll see how much information I can get on it. But it will be a ghost story. I'm doing a ghost story regardless next. So if you want to see the next one, definitely make sure to hit the like button so I know you guys are enjoying these. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it. And remember, there are always spooks to be found. And I hope that means I see all of you in my next spooky tale. Bye.